Boundless Authenticity Podcast. On this episode, Geraldine Orozco returns, and we talk a bit about consciousness, doing the real work, misinformation's impact on the evolution of consciousness, the fractal nature of our human vessels, and we also touch on DNA activation and reincarnation. Geraldine is a clinical hypnotherapist, meditation instructor, NLP, MBSRT, Qigong instructor, and owner of San Francisco-based Bay Area Meditation, which offers virtual corporate meditation programs internationally. Geraldine experienced a life-changing interdimensional contact experience, which resulted in the activation of psychic abilities of the multidimensional body and energy field. In 2017, Geraldine underwent hypnotic regression therapy. Regressions uncovered a lifelong history of contact. Geraldine utilizes her medical and clairvoyant intuition to see soul fragmentation, Akashic records, the morphogenetic hologram in all dimensional layers. She created DNA reprogramming in order to reintegrate fragmentation of the soul. Geraldine dedicates herself to the dissemination of knowledge of hybridization programs and the re-examination of the commonly held dogma of the human genetic timeline, historical record, and healing of the human biostructure. Visit GeraldineOrosco.com So what's been going on? G is for gangster. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, so much. Just working and doing some exciting projects, getting ready to plan a retreat for next year. And uh, yeah, lots of exciting stuff. And writing my book. That's okay, uh, very focused right now. Oh, finally, you're writing a book. Okay. Yeah, it's about time, right? <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, it's actually a series of books I'm writing. Um, um, the book that I'm writing right now is, is really diving deep into the construct of the holographic system and how essentially our biology plays a role in the co-creation of this holographic system. The connection between the organic body and the multidimensional realm through the morphogenetic field. Um, and just understanding maybe deeper layers of cyclical cycles of incarnation and, um, you know, how we are, how we are moving through this evolution. Um, so that's, that's what the book's going to be about. And it's breaking down, uh, elements of our interdimensionality, you know, contact experiences and how they play a role in our awareness of our multidimensionality, the awakening of that awareness. Um, and also how these experiences are really, how, how they activate our, our memory. And I think, um, you know, they're, these, they're, they're like key triggering life events of, of heightened senses of con- consciousness that help us remember what we truly are, essentially, multidimensionally. Um, and yeah, and, and, and then the second book is going to be breaking down the mechanics of the alchemy of that, which is essentially, you know, how does the human navigate this realm now that we understand the contra- construct? Um, how does the human integrate deeply these concepts into the embodiment um, and how we play them out? So um, it's really going into a bit of like the somatic, psychological, and biological elements of being a human, a spiritual human, this, this, this multidimensional human. Um, yeah. And then the third book is really about healing. It's self-healing, understanding deep techniques of self-healing, how the body heals and regenerates itself from the many levels. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a lot of work, uh, organizing these topics and, and, um, you know, making sure that it has kind of a over, an overview of, you know, the concepts that are trying to be expressed. And yeah, it's really exciting. So um, hopefully finishing those by the end of this year, I'm hoping. Thank you to myself that um, there's a bunch of different questions I want to ask you. But first, I wanted to say that it sounds like what you're writing about is exactly what needs to be given to the world at this time because i see there's so much stuff online and i don't even really pay that much attention to it but it seems like every time i sign on to instagram there's just a bunch of garbage there's a bunch of misleading information on there that is taking people further away from what would be their purpose you know like there's people like us that want to get 
helpful stuff out there. And then there's people out there who are following some kind of a narrative. And it's just like a little bit of the truth, but mostly false stuff. It seems to appeal to a particular demographic of person that just wants to get manifest some more money or something, and, you know, live the rock star lifestyle or something, some kind of a fictional reality. It's a, a matrix trap is really what it is. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm glad that, you know, you're out there getting ready to drop these bombs on people, these truth bombs. Thank you. I certainly hope so. Um, yeah, I think it's really important. I think that my, my purpose is to simplify complex concepts. And of course it's coming through the filter that I bring them through. Um, but I, I think that, that, you know, every little layer of information from people that are deeply connected to themselves, you know, we're able to channel just a little puzzle piece of this collective truth, really. And I think it's, you know, it's up to the human to discern that information. And I, I'm really huge on the implementation of, of actual practices and concepts. Um, I don't just like to philosophize about them. I want to know how to actually embody them and anchor them into this planet. So that's kind of by kind of uh, consider myself kind of experimenting in my own life. You know, how do we how do we do that? How do we learn to do that? And how do we get results? Um, so yeah, I, tr I think I think the books are are meant to invite people to implement them in very profound ways into their life and to see, uh, you know how their life can change. I think the best way to, to learn is to experiment, to experience truly in the body, these concepts. Oh uh, yeah. I'm happy to hear you say that because I always say that application comes before wisdom. And, um, exactly. there's a lot of people that want to do nothing, but be on a high vibration. And they, yeah. And they don't, I don't think they understand that once you commit to raising your consciousness to the highest that you can possibly get it before you die, um, it's a lifelong thing. It never ends. And there's more and more and more layers to it as you go along. And uh, quite frankly, it can be exhausting sometimes <laughs> because it's just never ending work that you don't necessarily want to do. Sometimes you see stuff and you're like, wow, I've really got to take a look at myself now and find a way to integrate this or discard it altogether. I don't really want to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I think true. that's what it we need a lot more of. It. That's just my yeah. personal opinion. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think it takes a lot of courage to do this work because we literally have to continuously move us, move ourselves out of any comfort zones that we might be nestling in, you know, concepts, uh, comfort of thought, comfort of beliefs, comfort, comfort of, uh, lifestyles, identities, we, we, we tend to attach, um, want to attach so deeply to identities and parts and ideas and concepts. And that's death. That's like, that's like, a, that's the, the road to death is, is, is the way I put it. Um, essentially we are such expansive, we are infinite potential embodied in this physical body. So there is no limit really to the potential that we have as humans and everything around us is continuously telling us that we are limited, that we are needing to be small, needing to contract ourselves, needing to put ourselves into a box or compartmentalize parts of our humanity. When in reality, um, it's about the expansiveness into those spaces that allows us to experience oneness and align with the true uh, cycles of nature in which we find truths, you know? So only when the human goes outside and continues to push themselves outside of these comforts, can they um, actually tap into these universal truths and really come into creation, which is what we're designed to do to be pure creators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what I talk about already. It's sensitive topics for a lot of people. I, I'd say don't watch the TV. Don't listen to so much mainstream music and stuff, at least not the more popular stuff because of like, um, well, you actually sent me the Instagram post. It was over a year ago with, with Kanye telling you about what the low frequencies in the sub bass in the music, what it does to your energy centers and stuff like that and yeah. i was like go oh, geraldine <laughs> but <laughs> you know that, that's you know that's what's going on it's to to kind of like slow you down slow your rate of vibration down and i know there's a lot of people that get upset with me when i say that because they think that it has to be so simplistic that if they feel free in their body and they're dancing to it that that's a positive thing 
And I say yes, but also no, because everything is dualistic in that way. And so you have to choose your battles. It, um, all this stuff like watching television and whatnot. What is the purpose of an actor except to pull you into their reality, right? To pull you into this emotional circumstance that you then emulate because it's distracting you from doing all of the stuff that you need to do to level up your consciousness. Like people don't understand, like there's a lot of stuff that you need to do. It, it may sound silly sometimes because I think people want to put it in this box of, Oh, you just want me to meditate for 24 hours every day, but it's not really like that. It's like, you know, you explain it the best but it's going through life, having these experiences, processing, discarding, integrating, you know, it's just constantly working on a sculpture is what it's like. And you either get the choice of not doing any work at all or, you know, knowing that you're going to go through these periods where there's going to be radical transformation. There's going to be a lot of stuff you have to alchemize, a lot of stuff you have to process, a lot of stuff you have to forgive, all these different layers and then when you get done doing that, and, you know, you got your past life stuff's coming at you <laughs> and it's just never ending. And, but everybody wants to have such an easy time with it. At least I shouldn't, I shouldn't say everybody because I don't want to overgeneralize like that. But the people who are coming to me on this level where I'm at, where they're spiritual seekers, they're transformation seekers, they never really put that much thought into these things before. we are just kind of known something is wrong. And now they're ready to hear it a little bit. But, you know, it's kind of like my job is kind of like taking candy from a baby all the time and they're going to cry about it, you know, because it's a, it's a comfort. It's this thing that I don't have to think about the reality. But what is the cost? Creating somebody else's reality rather than yours. And that kind of cycle is what slows down the rapid I guess I, I, not to use, I don't want to use the word ascension of, of consciousness, but, but essentially that's what it is. Well, if everybody's not doing their part, it's kind of like tug of war. Everybody should be pulling on that rope, right? Exactly. I'm just going to cut it off there and, and let you jump in. No, well, I mean, I just want to mention, we, are, we have to remember that we are bioelectrical organisms, which means that we, we exist in, in a state of frequencies. Are we, we don't want to be fooled by this physical vessel um, that is organic, but really only 2% of our DNA is writing the prote protein that creates all of these complex organic uh, systems within this body. In reality, we are, we are, the majority of our field is energetic. It is an energetic field. We are spheres within spheres, and we are made of spheres of frequency, um, you know, toroidal fields that are running and operating at certain uh, frequency rates. And all of that together creates this physical body. So, you know, the majority of our life experiences is, is, is vibrational. Uh, how we are vibrating, what we are emitting uh, from the core emotionally, every thought that we're having, every, um, our, our core intentions, the things that we're thinking and our existing in the subconscious mind are actually what are projecting into the reality. And they are what essentially create, they create our experience in this holographic system. And on the other side of that, um, you know, our, because we're bioelectrical, um, the charge that, that inputs into the system is really this core emotions. The emotions are what are the bioelectrical charges that input into this, into this system. And because we are these bioelectrical systems, we are essentially, we are conduits, conduits of creation. So we, we want to learn and we want to understand that everything that you're saying, I mean, frequency is constantly influencing us when we are in a dormant unconscious state when we have checked out of this body and we are on autopilot driving in the car down the road, listening to music, or when we're watching TV, we just checked out. We have no connection to our physical body. We don't know what our toes doing. We don't know where our back's doing. Um, we don't know really what we're even feeling in that moment or why we are feeling what we're feeling. And that lack of disconnect from the physical body is really harmful for you as, as an organic. It's that, that is not a natural state. 
in nature, you don't have leaves that are distracted by the movement of another leaf. Every leaf is living and existing. It's pure organic creative expression. And it abides by, by the elements, by the wind, by the air, by the you know, movement, by the seasons, and allows itself to fall into the natural cycles of those seasons, of, of that regeneration cycle, life and death. But the human falls into deep stagnation. The human isn't meant to be stagnant and disconnected from the body. That's like the pathway to death, essentially. Um, it is It is the because the more that we stagnate, we resist, we hold back, we suppress emotions, concepts, what we're feeling, what we are um, understanding the realm around us. Most of us are existing in resistance to the things that we're experiencing, um, and we want to run away. We don't want to feel... Um, we don't want to acknowledge, we don't want to accept. Um, so that constant state is actually a depletion state. And because you are a conduit, because you are a multidimensional body and you are, you are a vortex, you are made up of vortices and you are also a vortex that's made up of the main energy centers, energy spheres in the body um, that are self-organizing your infinite potential. And so every time that you come into a dormant state, you disconnect from the awareness of yourself, of your body, of your thoughts, of your intentions, um, essentially you are being man managed by the external, the material realm around us, which is constantly moving in cyclical states. Um, and what happens is that we are, we are no longer creating uh, the human, when they check out, they cannot create. And so because that is the innate purpose of your organism, you are existing in the third planet, uh, planet Earth. It's the third dimension. The third dimension is a representation of the alchemical marriage of the feminine and masculine energies that is birthing the third. Okay, So you are the third and you are birthing yourself constantly. You are giving birth to uh, you know, new parts of yourself, ev evolved uh, aspects of yourself constantly if you are not in that process of birthing and creation this is where the human organism becomes stagnant and essentially dies it, and before it dies it's not a quick and easy death it's it's suffering we exist in a constant state of suffering so um there's a, a real biological biochemical bioelectrical um, side effect to existing in unconscious states in these hypnotic states of disconnect um, we literally fall into these cycles, and these are counter-creative uh, cycles, counter-creative cycles that are merely accessing the information that you hold within your DNA epigenetically of everything, all the traumas and all of the fears, all the emotions that have not been addressed, that have been resisted and suppressed for generations, you are literally a product of that. And that is the cycle uh, that is the information that these cycles that you fall into are accessing. Um, so essentially, our life is nothing more than survival. We are surviving everything that has not been addressed for generations, uh, everything that we're resisting in our own life, we are surviving, when in fact, the natural state of a human is to be in pure states of creation, which means that you have the ability to create your life in whatever way you want in this very moment, as soon as you wake up consciousness and as soon as you come back into a state of creation, which is awareness, a pure state of presence and awareness, um, and literally bioelectrically, the body begins to move in that way because we have a very, very beautiful interconnected architecture to our multidimensional body because all of these chakras and these energy spheres are creating the toroidal field of your body, which is your it's the center of, of generation of, of life force. So as soon as you start being aware and connected to your body and aware of your thoughts and emotions, now you are moving along with these greater cycles of, of regeneration. And you have access to truth and you have access to your memory. This is the activation of your DNA, essentially. In, in these, we, we call it activation of DNA. But really what's happening is that you are reintegrating yourself. You are coming into the wholeness of yourself. Um, and so eventually the human begins to recognize that the lack of identity, the lack of attachment to all these things that we were once attaching to as a form of survival are exactly what 
limit us from coming into an evolutionary awareness of healing and health, vitality, abundance, um, that creates that magnet, that magnetism that is essentially attracting the things that are in resonance with us, right? So, so yeah, so that's really important to understand, you know, it's, we, we are such beautiful organisms, but the more you understand how you function, the more you can try to remember to snap yourself back into that state of harmony. Essentially, we are learning how to harmonize with the planet Earth, which is the mother. It's called the mother. It's, it's what gives birth to us um, energetically and biologically. The blood that runs through our veins is biochemically created and designed specifically to be run on this planet Earth, uh, giving life from the sun, right? So that life force that is producing energy and infinite potential um, the human begins to recover their memory. Uh, they, they gain access to the Akashic records, which are essentially the DNA of the earth. This is the collective ancestral memory. And as you mentioned, we begin to access our past lives. And when you begin to access that information, it's not, it's not so much that we become overwhelmed by these circumstantial memories and scenarios that we uncover, but what we're really understanding is that everything is quite cyclical. And when you distill all of these experiences, all you are left with is two choices because of this dualistic nature of the construct. Either you are creating from love or from fear. And everything that is being created from fear is essentially going into the cycle of counter creation because it's a contraction. It is an artificial, um, it, it is an artificial construct that is in resistance with nature and the natural laws of movement. Um, our organic, uh, you know, innately, we are wild, creative beings. We, we wild in the sense, not from prime, primal or, you know, just primates in any way. Um, but we are wild in that we have this infinite potential running through us um, and we are meant to experience things. Um, and sometimes that can cause us uh, experiences that are not so comfortable. So, so the invitation is that we have the courage to experience life fully, fully in all of its ranges without any judgment, without trying to categorize it as good, as bad, as right, as wrong, as, as nice, as ugly, uh, and, and evolve from there, learning continuously. Very well said. I mean... And whatever I'm creating is pretty good because I'm over here getting groomed <laughs> to perfection. This bird, <laughs> oh wow, this is bird awesome. is just loving on me. Um, I can't see you, by the way. I, I don't know if that's something. Yeah, I don't know if you can see me. I can see okay. me. Okay, yeah. good. I have you on solo view because everybody should be looking at you and not at me. But um, what I what I wanted to ask is like I have had clients in the past who have had a particular goal but there was some information in their subconscious but it wasn't just on that regular subconscious level like psychology talks about it it was in their morphogenetic field they specifically this one time this lady she wanted to lose weight she went on all the right diets she went on all the right workout routines she did everything the right way and every time she lost 20 pounds or so it would just come right back and she was like i haven't changed my diet and she called me panicking I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything I should be doing, I swear. And I thought to myself, something's up. And it hit me after a while. This is the information that is in her morphogenetic field that she needs to get in there. And so I had to put her into a hypnotic state and help her find these things. It was just a lot of unforgiveness and resentment and stuff. And something happened in her life between her and one of her parents in a previous lifetime and the parent did the same thing in this lifetime it died and she had decided that she was never ever going to forgive that parent and so she was keeping all this weight on her body and no matter what she did like even when she had she had days where she would just like try not to eat anything just to keep this weight off and it was just stuff Stuff that she needed to get rid of, you know, and so I don't think that um, I don't think that there's a lot of people who understand that things can be at that level. 
yet. I mean, if we if we get our way, the majority of people will come to know this information soon, sooner rather than later. Yeah, I I definitely think that a lot of people are beginning to connect to this understanding, and I think that I mean, I think we we do have a certain intelligence in us that we begin to recognize when we crave foods, for example, or when we crave certain behaviors. Um, clearly, we are deeply, deeply, well, because we're biochemical, we're deeply addicted, right, to, um, to the, bio, the chemicals that are being produced by the sensations of food when we eat or, you know, uh, things that are stimulating these emotions in us. So at the core, um, you know, we actually develop parasites in the body um, and, and we become parasitic. So anytime that we are not meeting our emotional needs in any way, we are searching outside of ourselves in order to be fulfilled in that way. So we, we look to be filled emotionally, we look to be filled psychologically, physically. And that, again, it's that centrifugal um, state of being that the body comes into. It's a depletion of the life force because we are purely, we become codependent on our external uh, to feed us, to nourish us, to fulfill us. Um, so that, that in itself is a parasitic um, behavior. That's what parasites do. Parasites colonize other organisms in order to use them for their benefit. So in a sense, uh, we, are, we are using all of these external things to fulfill these parts of us that have not been addressed. So eventually the human begins to uh, fractalize that within the body. And we create parasites inside of our um, inside of our body to feed into those emotional states that are being unfulfilled. So literally, people will develop parasites which will make them want to eat certain things, sugary foods or salty foods, or whatever it is. There are very profound somatic roots in in this, and we a lot of times when we are working and i also work with with people in dna reprogramming that are learning to balance their their weight um but essentially when we begin to access some of these core emotions that arise just simply when you start craving food for example very simply um you know what's the emotion that's coming up and it, it'll be amazing sometimes as you tune into that hunger, first you, you notice the hunger and then you begin to notice an anger and then you begin to notice this disgust and this uh, rejection, uh, unworthiness. You know, you keep going down the layers. Emotions are, are programmed and memorized in the body through layers of frequency. Each one of those, each emotion has a frequency. So fear frequency, sadness, you know, anger, disgust, all of those have different frequencies. And so the way that this beautiful, intelligent body functions is that we self-organize all this information naturally. Um, and it is in layers. Every single emotion has many layers of emotion. It's primary, secondary, tertiary emotions. And when you're getting into that tertiary emotion, that's when you start getting to the root of these emotions. And if the human would simply sit with those emotions, just observing the emotion in the body, and what it's doing. Um, at first, the human is going to get so wrapped up into the sensation and feelings of those, the reactions that are deeply programmed. And a lot of those reactions, actually, they are learned. They are something that we have adopted from parents, family, friends, even films, uh, you know, music, radio. Um, we have these, these constructs that are built. They are false constructs of how we should react or feel certain emotions so the way that there are pure and authentic ways of feeling emotions that majority of humans are not even aware of we most of us are feeling the emotions based on how we've been told we should feel them so that causes a great amount of disconnect and um basically dissonance in the body. You know, we, we are disassociated completely from our authentic uh, feelings and this constant disassociation from childhood, because usually mom says, oh, that didn't hurt, don't worry. Or, oh, uh, you know, you're not cold or you're, you're, it doesn't matter if you're hot, put the sweater on. You know, like all of these constant 
um, denials of your own authentic truth cause a severe disconnect in the body. And of course, you know, we don't realize that when we're parents, we don't realize the effect of that. But these have very long, deep somatic roots in the body where the human doesn't know how to meet their needs or what their needs are. So the human literally has to kind of come back to this pure, subtle, authentic awareness where they can begin to understand and allow themselves to feel their authentic emotions. And in DNA or programming, which is what I do, when we go into these layers, we begin to realize, oh my gosh, this emotion of disgust or hate, this emotion I've been feeling my entire life, um, and I live my entire life resisting or running away from that emotion. And I've built entire personalities. I've built my food choices based on that, my relationship choices, the clothes that I wear based on those emotions and feelings. Um, the illnesses that exist in my body are a result of, of managing and juggling the resistance of those emotions. And when you go back to the root, you find a memory in childhood or many memories in childhood where that has been triggered. And the human that accesses those memories simply through the emotional memory, you don't need to go back to details or specifics. It is completely programmed in your energetic body, in your field. So the human um, begins to uncover that memory and again, diving into those layers. It is incredibly healing and profoundly expansive for the human to access this because what happens is that we begin to unwrap the layers of the onion that help us find the true self. And what you find in the true self is that you are all and nothing simultaneously. Okay. And that is, that's quite a concept. But when you begin to realize that the more, the more you deconstruct these false constructs and labels and attachments that you've built on yourself, the true self is very, it's, it's very simple and it's extremely expansive. You begin to reconnect with that infinite potential that is available through you, that is you. Um, and you might realize that all of these identities and roles and choices that you've made in your life they were only for the pure reason of survival, this concept that we are surviving. Without, you really didn't need to do any of that. Um, so, so yeah, so, you know, this, this kind of healing and, and the somatic connection to, to food, for example, and how we put on weight or how we become unhealthy, you know, the antidote to that is to be able to train yourself to come into pure authenticity, to absolute authenticity, to give yourself the space to listen truly, acknowledge truly what you feel, what you think, what you know. Um, and from there, begin to assess, you know, is that really your core true belief? Um, and I, I always make this practice of coming back to the observer. I've, I've found great success with this technique with all of these techniques I'm mentioning with people that are trying to lose weight, for example. Um, another element is that people put on weight to protect themselves, you know, and I see it a lot for sexual abuse um, victims or survivors. The door might say that's true. Uh, yeah. They, they put on the weight to protect themselves. And, and this, especially when we have a lot of sexual trauma, um, you know, we, we literally deliberately feel that we need to put on layers and in those layers is emotional suppression, emotional resistance, the inability to accept severe traumas that have happened to us. Um, so, so yeah, so, you know, uncovering those layers are really important and the human becomes free once and for all because we are, we become slaves to our eating habits. We become slaves to our emotions that we're running away from, you know. Um, and we limit our own life. It's not to say that one form of body is the right way or not. Um, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about emotional health and pure authenticity. Like whatever it is that you're doing, are you existing in your pure, you know, integrated self? That's the priority. Yeah, it's true. I mean, this is heavy knowledge, <laughs> really heavy knowledge, but it's not a heavier load to carry than just the simple amount of trauma-based mind control that everybody is subjected to. 
all at any given time throughout their development uh, on this planet. It, it seems as though the overlords have kind of really figured out how to set the system up in a way, which would, I guess the system we would call it the matrix, set it up in a way that there's nothing but that you're bombarded with it constantly. And a question that I would ask you is for the beginner who wants to become the observer how do you detach from that wanting to participate in the bad news, the trauma, the things that are going wrong in the world? Yeah, I think, I think the, the, to distill it to the answer is learn to trust yourself. Um, because I think a lot of the why we look outside of ourselves at the news or at the information that, which you know we're in the information age we're now in the artificial intelligence age where not only are we getting information but we're getting all kinds of false made up information it's really interesting and it's shocking me more and more um you know how much how much fake contact there, t- content there is out there you can't even tell what is real anymore what is reality and that's it's a very interesting time that we as humans are coming into right now and it's going to require a intense amount of, of discernment um so in order to discern and navigate what is the truth what is what is something you know we need to come back to the self um and to um to cultivate trust with ourselves because um, the reason why we look outside is because we are existing in a survival state and we want to, we want to assure ourselves. We want to give ourselves a false sense of security that we're safe, a false sense of security that we can control, uh, you know, things that are happening in and outside of us. But that control is an illusion. We cannot control anything that exists outside. Even if we get all the information in the world, you still will not be able to control um, what happens because the nature of this construct is infinite potential, infinite experiences, uh, infinite potential to experience. And the dependency on these external forms of information are essentially pulling you away from your creativity, which is are you creating your reality? So if you're busy surviving, you're definitely not creating your reality. So people might think it's a dichotomy to talk about control and creation of your reality. They're not the same things. The creation, your creation is being congruent with your core values, what is truly in alignment with you, that you are, that you are aware of, um, you know, what, what are, what is most important for the highest state of vitality, state of health for your body, state of abundance, state of uh, co-creation with this realm. So to cultivate that, the human um, has, to, has to be able to acknowledge their fears, uh, come in again to that authenticity of your true state. If you are running away from any part of you into looking at the news or trying to be in a state of survival, you are not going to know what you need to survive. You're not going to really know what this organism needs in a moment of, of true um, difficulty. You're going to be very disconnected. Um, and that that's the key. Actually, for the human to really be safe, if you want to be safe, you have to be really connected to yourself and you have to have a cultivated intuition, which is completely severed when you connect to an external source of information. When you connect to your internal intuition, you begin to access the Akashic Record, which is the DNA of the Earth, which is an infinite source of information beyond time and space. And, you know, this is, this is something that I'm not just talking concept. This is something that, you know, I cultivate and I experience in my life, that when I connect to my higher self and when I connect to my higher wisdom, um, this is where I begin to access truth. And you have access to all the truth that ever existed and ever was. Uh, in 2017, when, you know, when I had um, hypnotherapy and I began to go deep into the, the layers of, of my subconscious mind, I opened this, this up. And I literally knew everything in that moment. And progressively, everything that ever was and, and ever was, was coming to this, to this earth. And so I got there by deprogramming completely everything that I thought I knew. And 
And to come into that state, this is where you come into resonance to these, uh, this library of information. And that's really when you begin to understand what is, what is really going on in the world. And the news becomes uh, a theater. You, you begin to look at the news as a theater, as a manipulation of your emotions, manipulations of your, your lack of the ignorance, really, of how you function as an emotional organism. Um, yeah. I would sit here and I would just applaud you. I'd clap for hours. <laughs> Everything you just said, because it's, it's stuff that I think I, I harp on a lot, but it just can't be said enough. It just cannot be stressed enough because it really can be that simple. Once you understand it, there, there's no way you can not understand it. Again, yeah. you, can, you can't go back to sleep after you figure it out. It's just impossible. Um, and sometimes I think me and my partner, we, we say to each other, you know, us, you ever wish you could just go back and not know any of this? <laughs> and uh, she's, she was like, yeah, all the time. Because <laughs> it would be so easy to just chill out and drink a milkshake and watch a movie and you know, worry about what the weather is going to be like tomorrow and stuff like that. But you, once you really get going, you don't have time to worry about stuff like that. You're constantly just in this really good feeling of of knowing that you have this huge responsibility to yourself. It's not even to the rest of the world. It, it's uh, as soon as you start changing yourself, everything else is going to seem to be making small shifts. But until then, you stay in this hopeless, helpless state of being. Yeah. Also, and, and, um, um, I don't know. I wish I, I wish I knew. Yeah, go for it. No, I'm so sorry. I uh, there's a little bit of a time lag. Please continue. Yeah, there is that time lag for sure. I keep trying to pause a little bit, um, but it's not doing any good for me. Um, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying I wish I knew. Four sentences, just a short paragraph that I could put on just like a business card and give to everybody that I saw that would get them to understand how easy it is once you get in the flow of doing this work on yourself. That it's nothing to worry about. It's really just about non-resistance and acceptance. You just, you just do it. There's nothing that you need to fear at all. Yeah. That's right. Or maybe um, that was it. Maybe that was what I should put on the business card. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is, it is that simple. Uh, also, you know, I, I've totally played with the concept of like, what if I were to go back to this, you know, state of, of as they say, ignorance is bliss, right? But I can tell you as, as a social experiment that I have done on myself that any time that I have fallen asleep, what I've discovered back asleep, um, you know what I've discovered? It's really interesting. We, because of your level of understanding now, you really cannot go back to this state of ignorance. And what happens is um, when you fall back asleep, you think that you were in a bliss state then, not knowing any of these things. But in reality, your entire life is being driven by cycles of suffering. And the more unconscious you become, the more you run away from the truth or from your own authenticity. Um, you know, the more we experience severe contrast until the human wakes up again. We literally, we're not designed to be asleep. We're not designed to be unconscious. Uh, because every time that we become unconscious, we are going to fall into the law of accident. The law of accident wakes you up. It shakes you up out of your unconscious state through an accident, through a paper cut, through, you know, a, a death of someone um, that quickly wakes your 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 vibrational state up uh, in order to ask you to elevate it once again to be in harmony with the collective because you know this universe everything is is, is spiraling everything moves in this universe in the form of a spiral and the way everything is naturally ascending to a higher octave um, every moment and the, the moment that the human falls asleep. Um, it starts to fall out of alignment with that natural cycle. And we come into counter creative cycles in which we fall into the laws of accidents. So 
you know, it's really, really interesting. But I think, I think a lot of the reason why we want to go back to sleep is because we are used to um, the illusion of control. We are used to the idea that, um, you know, we have to become something or we have to sustain something. But to, be, to wake up is really to become nothing, to detach from these little small identities and labels that we post on ourselves. Um, and, and that's really hard for the ego. The ego always wants to have an identity. The ego always wants to have a definition. We always want to define things because that's our, our ignorant state of security. You know, that's how we can define and be safe in that, in that definition. Um, and it's also, it's also part of the, there's a certain laziness that the soul wants to experience that it wants to be comfortable in that definition. Once you reach the definition, you're good. You can just coast for a little bit, but that is not the innate nature of the human experience. The innate nature of the human experience is to be in constant flow in constant ebb and flow in constant giving, receiving in constant, uh, you know, loss and gain in constant death in life. And, um, that we have to learn how to become comfortable with that discomfort. We have to be okay with constantly being moved through and experienced in that way. So it is the ultimate, I, I would say the human experience is the ultimate experience of detachment, letting go and surrender. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that trusting the self is really the number one key the, to alchemize this, codependent attachment to the external material realm. And essentially we have to learn to trust ourselves in all potential experiences. And in order to do that, we have to elevate our perception of what we are away from the idea that we're finite material into an understanding that you are infinite energy, which is constantly moving. And that even if you experience a suffering or a death, that, the way that this human body functions, you have the power with your mind to transcend suffering. You have the, the power to overcome pain. Um, you know, there are, you know, many examples of that around the world from, you know, the Buddhist monks walking over charcoal to fundamentalist Christians in the South drinking poison and actually surviving and, and overcoming the poison by connecting to, you know, Christ or, or God. The, we have in our bodies the ability to self-heal ourselves, to regenerate, to overcome, to control this physical body, our body. And that is all. And that, that is everything, really. Um, because from there, you can control how you experience the external uh, influence. And the more we cultivate every moment this trust in little micro doses throughout your day, whether it's uh, cultivating things that are congruent with your authenticity, um, building uh, an understanding of things that make you feel good about yourself, proud about yourself, um, from your high ethics of harmony within yourself and others, this is, this is the embodiment of self-love. And this is why we talk about self-love being the, the crux of, of this ascension or, or aware, awareness, enlightenment. How, you, how do you reach that bliss state? Um, is, is these loving acts. Love is really a unifying force that is unifying yourself with yourself and then yourself with the whole. So I would say, you know, this, this is a trust. Even in death, we trust ourselves. Um, and I think, as you know, many, many ancient civilizations have been working um, on training ourselves in death, training ourselves in dream state, because guess what? Not only are you ascending and doing this in the waking state, which is also a dream state, you're doing it in your dream time. And then you're doing it in death when you leave this physical body. You are, you are trusting this infinite essence that is navigating these many dimensions. Yeah, I feel that one deeply. <laughs> dream time is something else. Sometimes I don't even want to go to bed. <laughs> because I know what's going to happen next. I know I'm going to start to dream and I, yeah. there's going to be things that I have to work on there too. And it's like, I, I get up in the morning and it's like, why do I feel like I only took like a 30 minute nap? 
That's amazing. Yeah, that that is really, um, there are some energy techniques um, that if you clear your energetic body before you go to sleep and, and when you wake up, actually you can experience those things lighter. So the higher the vibrational frequency, which is which I suggest is neutrality, um, the more you cultivate neutrality, the easier all of these experiences are going to become. The more fluid, the more, the more less attached they will become. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Maybe some nights I do it and other times I don't because sometimes I get up and I feel great. I feel perfect. And it was a wild dream. But there's other times where it's really, I guess it, and, and those are the ones that are really the most emotional, though. There's a lot of times I think I see, um, I think I see myself from other planes, I would say. I see versions of myself doing other things. Sure. And it's like I'm forced to watch. And sometimes those ones are the most rough ones because yeah, I want to stop it, but I know that I can't and, and I don't. I know that I'm just yeah. trying to learn and improve and um, not really so much intervene with what's going on. Like I could wake up if i wanted to but i don't you know and it took me a while to get used to that it took me years to get used to that this has been going on now for like 10 years and ever since i had my first um real i guess what you would call awakening experience um the dreams slowly started coming in little by little and it's just gotten more and more intense as time goes on and it seems like the more i let go of the more intense those dreams get to where um like these days i don't even know the difference between a dream and real life like it, it just it's startling sometimes i'll wake up and I, I don't even bother journaling about it anymore i actually just try to sit there and meditate and i go like whoa what was that you know was that past life is that like a future life? What am I seeing? Is that a different planet? Because a lot of stuff is, it's not like, it's not planet Earth. The layout of things is not earthly at all. The animals and the plants and stuff, not from here. Yeah. Well, definitely the dream state is the state in which we navigate past and future lives. And um, the thing is that these timelines are not operating at a linear time, time scape. Everything is actually simultaneous. So past lives, future lives, they are all existing in this present moment right here, right now. When you leave your body at the time of sleep, the vibrational frequency at which you leave your body will dictate the kind of experiences that you're having. Um, you will be a resonance to these different dimensions. Um, you know, we navigate these different dimensions based on the shifting of our brainwave states. And the shifting of your brainwave states is really depending on how you're holding your vibrational frequency in your body. The higher, the higher you begin to move your energy in the body and the more you discard um, limiting belief systems, dark, deeper emotions, stagnant emotions, resistant emotions, the higher you're able to elevate into these dimensional realms. And remember that this is also a dream state. And that's why, you know, you, you're, you're aware of that. You know that this is a dream state. We're also in the dream state. And that's why we can't differentiate between dream and reality. There really is no difference. Um, it's just vibrational frequency that is, a diff that, that is the difference, the density of which you're experiencing you know, these different states. But um, essentially, we, we have something called experiential agreements. And we, every, with every single human, we, are, we have contracts based on that vibrational frequency. Um, that frequency is the resonance that unites us into these co-creative experiences. The same way that we do on Earth, like you and I uh, have a contract to do this show today, um, on higher dimensions, um, we create contracts as well with other dimensions and other beings that are existing in these alternate simultaneous universes, all of which are, in a sense, a reflection of our resonance. So actually, you can work 
in these dimensions as you do in the waking state, breaking or dissolving or alchemizing the agreement of vibrational frequency that you share with those people, places, and things. Um, and that is the work. That's the true work. The human that becomes aware of their resonance as they come into this experience is actually the one in charge, is the master of creation. Um, we are pure creators and we are the masters of our creation. And so we, and that's true in this physical dream, but it's also true in all the dimensions that we're experiencing. So what's really, what's really interesting is that when the human begins to wake up consciousness and become lucid in that dream state, you can look at the contract that you have created with these beings or experiences and from there discern if you are in harmony with those experiences or not. And if you're not, if you're no longer in harmony or you, if you, if you fully understand why you are there, it's, it's really not about whether you like what you're experiencing or not. It's whether you understand why you are there, what brought you to experience that experience. That the alchemization of that core belief that made you in resonance with that is actually how you, you change or shift out of those experiences, how you wake up consciousness. And dreams are very powerful because you are activating dormant fractals of yourself because it's the dormant fractal of yourself that is bringing you into that dream in order to wake up another layer of your subconscious self. So as you begin to dissolve this agreement, which is alchemizing, so let's say what brought you in resonance was self-doubt, okay? And uh, in this dream, you are tested, you are in a war, you're tested in, in this dreamlike state. Um, so as you alchemize that, uh, what happens is that the construct changes. Um, and this is really, really powerful because what happens is that in the process of alchemizing that you become one with the fractal that is experiencing this dream state. So I teach this a lot in my lucid dreaming classes. Essentially, dreams are another form of a high integration platform for ascension and for becoming lucid. Um, and it's, it's very important what we do in dreams because the majority of our life, half of our life is spent in dream state. Half of our life is spent in those agreements. And guess what? Everything that you are agreeing to or not agreeing to in these dream states is affecting your current life. And it's also affecting your next life, okay? Because the next, the, next, the next time you become conscious, the only reason why you are here in this planet Earth and aware of this physical vessel is that you are aware of yourself as this fractal. If you, um, if, you know, it's, it's interesting. People that experience, well, we don't have time to go into that, but People that experience like multiple personalities and um, have like what, what we call as mental disorders, usually they're oscillating between dimensions and they are stuck in that, in that middle ground of in, in interdimensionality. So they can't anchor into one aspect of themselves. They begin to pull from several at the same time. Um, and that, that causes a lot of confusion in operating in this physical realm, but they... In reality, you know, that is a product of many generations of the denial of the present moment. When there are many generations of the denial of the present moment, the resistance of what is in this present moment, it manifests these kinds of conditions in the bloodline um, in order to anchor um, the awareness into the present moment fully, 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 fully. Um, so, yeah, so I think dreams are... are very, very important. And remember that all the ancient civilizations from the Egyptians to the Mayans to the Incas to the Hindus to the Buddhists to the ancient Europeans and the Druids, all of these ancient groups through history are talking and teaching us and passing down the messages about waking and becoming lucid in dream state in order to prepare for death. Because essentially death is nothing more than entering into another dimensional realm based on your resonance. So to have an optimum death and a really great reference for who talks about the physics of that is Dan Winter, um, um, who talks about optimum death, that when the body comes into its highest functioning vibrational frequency rate, 
um, which is neutrality, where we anchor through the heart center. You alchemize all of the lower emotions into a higher octave through, through the heart, through compassion, through forgiveness. You come into a detachment of all those lower forms of self, the identifications of self, and the human can begin to become free. It becomes all and nothing. So that physically creates an implosion in the body. And that implosion allows the, the human vessel to access a higher octave where it dissolves the physical vessel into a non-physical uh, form of, of energy, which is a generation. It's a, it's a core of energy. Um, so we continuously want to become this conduit of co-creation through the alchemization of the heart. Um, that is what alchemy is. And we're doing that in many dimensions. That's how you alchemize. So if you find yourself in severely traumatic dreamscapes, um, it's, it's mirroring to you the depths of your subconscious mind in which we have still not integrated these parts of ourselves. Um, and we need to alchemize them through looking at the contracts and coming into that implosive love state the alchemization of that, through compassion, through love. Um, and love emerges from neutrality, which means that you are not judging it as good and bad, right and wrong. You transcend that in order to see ultimate truth. You put yourself in the shoe of the aggressor, of you know the killer, um, and you begin to understand the human humanity as one. That That's essentially how you alchemize uh, some of these concepts. Um, the goal is unity consciousness, which is what we are designed to experience, and, and we are innately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Um, a fair amount of my dreams as well, I find, are precognitive. Like, I'll know Amazing. when something's about to happen. Somebody's going to die. There's going to be an accident. Um something's going to happen you hear about it in the news some event and um you just got to learn to deal with it <laughs> honestly and not yeah. see it as an attack on you or like be like oh i'm i'm a psychic i have this amazing gift you just uh, don't put any labels or constraints or anything on it and just see it as an experience and maybe it'll show up in your reality in terms of this realm or maybe it won't you know maybe it has happened elsewhere but it, it just it's important to not get caught up in any of this stuff but i got one more question i want to ask you and then i'll let you go so if we have the capacity to experience past lives and then future lives what exactly is the point of that versus reincarnating to experience certain things like what what do you think that's about um yeah so essentially we we are a fractal of infinite infinite potential that is simply experiencing um and it really is that simple and at least that's what i can claim to offer as an answer based on everything that i have observed not as an ultimate truth, but as a potential suggestion <laughs> that essentially um, we are here purely to experience. And there is the concept that the universe or the source is learning through us, but I think it's, it's even more than that. I think that experience in itself is, is, is an aggregation of all the expansion of infinite potential um, and it's just a matter of all all things evolving naturally through that through those experiences. So, yeah, I think I think the mechanics of incarnation on the planet Earth, however, they do abide by certain laws of this realm. And again, it's cyclical. So, if a if a, if, a, if this if this entity becomes deeply attached to its material form, unfortunately, that attachment through frequency makes it come back and come back and come back and come back. So the more attachments we have to the physical realm, it seems that we continue to reincarnate in this construct uh, as a certain frequency. Um, some can look at that as a limitation. Others can 
can understand that as as the free will you know that is available to any any organism um and the concept isn't th- this life in my opinion isn't about reaching or getting away from suffering specifically to experience a bliss state it's about the ability to see yourself as all and to be okay with that <laughs> it's okay with having terrible experiences it's okay with having super high bliss experiences and to be moving through that and i think actually if the goal mm-hmm. were to leave the more dense physical sensation experience it would be to learn to train in that neutrality because the less form you are the higher octave the beings are and, and we know this in contact as well really high vibrational frequency beings they have no form they're just energy they're just light and they will never interfere they will never take they will never uh you know try to exchange anything with you they just are um this pure consciousness um so yeah that's kind of how i look at that well i asked you the hardest question that i could think of and you nail it (laughs) (laughs) oh okay (laughs) well i'm so happy to be able to share you know my my knowledge and of course i don't claim to know anything as as (laughs) well as as i offer it through my experience and perception well geraldine uh, a year and eight months is too long to go without talking to you so we'll have to schedule another one of these sessions and um make it happen very soon if you want you can go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you and then i'll let you go yeah johan thank you so much for having me it was such a pleasure to be here um if you guys want to work with me in dna reprogramming or a hypnotherapy to excavate your subconscious mind um you can reach me at geraldinarosco.com and i also have a youtube channel geraldine Orozco, where you can access a lot of free content where i dive deep into these topics um, and I have them both in Spanish and English. So, um, yeah, it was a pleasure to be here as always, Jahan. And I hope to see you soon. All right. Great. I hope to see you again soon, too. Also, this is just a quick note. Um, the Awakening of Humanity event is happening October. Is that starting October 8th, I believe? And Geraldine will be speaking and I will be speaking as well as long as as you see us and then it's kind of like if a tree falls in the woods does anybody hear it so please show up (laughs) and uh give us your support and there's going to be a lot of awesome speakers at this event and i know that the listeners of this show are very curious about what's really happening out there and so if you want to find it then you gotta go there well thanks for being on the boundless authenticity podcast it's been a blast I'm Jahan Sator, a CTAA-accredited cognitive behavioral therapist, hypnotherapist, nutrition coach, mindfulness teacher, and specialist in the area of subconscious self-sabotage. You may also know me as the host of Boundless Authenticity. I assist by showing people of all walks of life how to be mindful and allow the negative automatic thoughts about the events of the external and the associated programs to reveal themselves fully so that they can learn to establish deep inner peace and operate from purpose and passion. Much of my work focuses on removing the disempowering thoughts and beliefs from the subconscious mind, which cause us to create less than favorable emotional consequences and circumstances. I teach you various ways to change internal dialogue, clear harsh memories and emotions, and delete useless information from the subconscious. I also teach when to meditate, how to meditate, and why you have certain thoughts and feelings during meditation and how to handle them effectively. If you or someone you know are struggling with self-sabotaging behaviors and harsh emotional consequences, please do contact me at selfsabotageinfo at proton.me. You're listening to the Boundless Authenticity Podcast, where we discuss everything related to the evolution of human consciousness. At the very least, people need to understand that the United States builds bunkers, which are basically cities underground every three months. Basically, when you dream, you tap into your subconscious. It is your nocturnal intuition, your creativity and imagination unchained from conscious reason, ego and logic. The biology of life will burn out of
soul. They have AI consciousness. They can alter your consciousness and the brain to get the brain. We live in a multidimensional reality. Whether it comes through esoteric information in the spiritual realms or the UFO people experiencers or mainstream through quantum physics and through mainstream science now realizing that parallel dimensions probably exist. We're all spiritual beings. We're all having these human experiences. We've heard that phrase over and over and over. But what does that really mean? You know, all of the questions of life, we have these answers inside of our soul. We're ultimately studying the nature of what it is to be human, good and evil, our psychology, how we think, and our health. That's why I love Bruce Lee's great quote, all knowledge is ultimately self-knowledge. The Boundless Authenticity Podcast.